Hi, in this video we're going to look at something called the box model in HTML and CSS and we're also going to look at how to apply padding to different elements on a web page, so how to add spacing around uh, our elements. So uh, basically every element that is inside a web page such as text or images, um, links, uh, any kind of element on a web page can be considered as a box and in CSS, we use the term box model when we're talking about the, the design and layout of HTML elements on a web page. So the CSS box model, it's basically the idea that uh, every element, each element on a web page has a box wrapped around it. Um, so each element is, is in a box. And the box consists of the content itself, um, for example, text or images. Uh, like we have here. Uh, padding, uh, so that's the clear uh, transparent space around the content. A border, uh, so a line, a border around content. And the margin, uh, so that's clear transparent space around the border. Okay, so if we have a look at this image here, this kind of illustrates the box model in HTML and CSS. We might have content, so it could be a paragraph, it could be a heading, it could be an image, any kind of content on a web page. And it exists inside a box. And you can have a border around that content. And between the border and that content is padding. All right, so padding is spacing around that particular element, around that content, whether it's text or an image or something else. All right, and that padding goes um, between any border that might exist, whether the border is visible or not. And then outside the border is the margin, and that's spacing between uh, the border around this content and any other content that's on the page. And we can apply padding, so spacing inside the box, or, or a border, or a margin, to any of the four different sides of each box. So we could just add, say, a border on the bottom of content, or padding to the left of content, or a margin to the right, and so on. All right, so um, if we have a look at this page here, we have some sample content that we're going to, um, in this video, we're just going to work with padding. And then in the next two videos, we'll look at um, borders and margins and how to add those. So I've got a H1 size heading, a H2 size heading, a H3 size heading, a regular paragraph, and then an image here. And if we have a look at the code uh, in the body section, those are the three headings, the paragraph, and the image, which I've just set the width to 30% because it's, it's a big image. In my CSS code over here, I've already just added to the body of the page, I've just made the font family Arial, um, just so um, it's not using the Times font. All right, now what I'm going to do is just show some examples of how we can add padding to, uh, to different elements on the page. So let's start with the H1 size heading. So we'll just refer to the H1 element selector there. And just to make this padding visible, what we'll do is just change the background color to yellow. All right, so save and go back and refresh the page. And we can see that there's now this whole heading, actually the whole line is as yellow. Um, but we can see there's no, there's no real space on the left-hand side here. Um, there's a little bit of space uh, above and below the line, although not so much here where the G is. Um, but there's no space to the left at all. There's just a line spacing um, top and bottom. So what we can do is we can add padding. All right, now if we just say padding and then a pixel amount, so for example, 20 pixels, if we just specify one number there, that means the padding is going to be applied to the top, the bottom, the left, and the right. So after saving and refreshing the page, we now see um, spacing around the content, but not outside the box. So this yellow uh, heading, this heading, we can actually see now that it's a box. The heading is contained within a box. And padding is the space within that box, um, between the edge of the box and the actual content itself. So we've added some, some padding or spacing around that content there. All right. Let's have a look at another example. This time we'll apply this to the H2 size heading. And we'll just use a different background color for this one. Just 
just so it stands out. This time what we'll do is instead of specifying one value for the padding to apply to all, all four sides of the box, we'll uh, use separate lines of code to specify um, the top, the right, the bottom, and the left. So top, I'm going to make 50 pixels. The uh, right-hand side, I'll make that 20 pixels. The bottom padding, I'll make that 50 pixels. And on the left, uh, let's go 30 pixels. Okay, so what we've done here is we've specified different amounts of padding for all four sides, for the top, the right, um, the bottom, and the left have got um, their own padding uh, set. All right, so there we go. You can see we've got a little bit of padding on, on the left here, but more padding on the top and the bottom. All right, I could um, maybe reduce the top down to 30. So there's not as much padding as there is on the bottom. So that's, that's how you can modify the padding on uh, the different sides. All right, there's another way of doing that actually, uh, which is a little bit tidier and um, reduces the number of lines of code needed. So here we'll just change, we'll apply this now to the H3 size heading, pick a different background color. Um, now we can do padding all in one line of code, but for all four sides. So the order that this, this goes in is top, right, bottom, and left. We can specify different values separated by a space, and these values represent the, the padding on the four sides. Okay, so this is 10 pixels on the top, 20 pixels to the right side, um, 10 pixels on the bottom, and then 20 pixels on the uh, left side, okay? So let's save and refresh that. And there we go, we have some, some padding there. Now don't worry too much about the, the padding on the um, sides here. Um, we can't really see the padding on the sides and that's just because when we add a heading, um, a heading occupies the full, full width of the screen, a whole row um, or a line on the screen, okay? But when we start looking at other elements uh, that we add to the page like divs or divisions where we can um, create little boxes on the page of different sizes, um, then we'll see um, the padding more clearly on the on those sites. Okay, um, one more method I'll show is with uh, paragraph, another way of specifying multiple padding values. Um, and for the paragraph, we'll make the background color light blue. And um, this time we'll say padding again but we'll only specify two values. And when you only specify two values, what that means is you're specifying one for the top and the bottom and one for left and right. Okay, so in this case, 10 pixels, that's gonna be the amount of padding for top and bottom, and 30 pixels is going to be the amount of padding for uh, left and right. All right, there we go. Okay. And lastly, we could also do the image as well. Um, we could add, you know, maybe 50 pixels of padding for that. Okay, and we can see that that's added to the all four sides. All right, so that's basically padding. Pacing is just, uh, padding is just, sorry, um, padding is just spacing around the content uh, in a box. Uh, and all elements that are visible on the web page are basically boxes um, where you can specify padding, margins, uh, and borders. Okay. Um, one other thing to note is that you don't have to use pixel, uh, the pixel unit. You can use percentages as well. So I could say 10% um, padding for the image, which looks like that. Or I could lower it maybe to about 5% which looks like that. So you don't have to use pixels. You can use uh, other units as well, such as percentage. Okay, that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll have a look at um, adding um, borders and then we'll have a look at margins. Thanks for watching.